Welcome all to the Beniverse. I am Ben Friedman and as you can tell I am not on video this week because honestly I just do not like doing video and I'm much more comfortable on the audio form as I've been doing my podcast for a while and this is just how I prefer to do it so I'm going to try this out for a little bit. I might go back and do some video throughout but just for now just also with having to do 25 reviews in 25 days it's just a little I have to focus a little bit much more and video editing and all that gets harder plus I'm uncomfortable still on camera something that I think I will grow into but for right now it's just a lot easier to do it this way so anyway for what is day 15 of my advent movie reviews I am talking about the 2021 American superhero film directed by Kate Shortland, Black Widow. This is, this was up until, what was the last MCU movie before this? I think, no way. Was it Spider-Man No Way Home? Yeah, because nothing came out in between 2020 because Black Widow was supposed to be the first one out. So yeah, oh my gosh. This was the first MCU film since Spider-Man no Way Home, which had come out... Sorry, No Way Home. Sorry, Far From Home, which had come out right after Avengers Endgame. And this film stars Black Widow, played by Scarlett Johansson. It also features the performances of... We have Florence Pugh as her kind of sister figure, Elena Belova, who's also the Black Widow, as we kind of learn in the film. David Harbour as the Red Guardian and another father-like figure to Romanoff. And you also have, uh, I'm going to mispronounce this name. No, I won't. Wait. Rachel Weiss as Melina, who is, again, kind of the mother figure. She's married to David Harbour's character. And this film, as I said, was directed by Kate Shortland, who doesn't really have much on her career that I'm particularly familiar with. She had a film from 2017 called The Berlin Syndrome and 20, 2004. She had this film called Somersault. Again, so I'm just not particularly familiar with her work. That doesn't really describe her as a director. But again, I just... Out of some of the other directors that I had known, even characters like Russo, who I wasn't particularly well-versed if they had done movies. I still don't know if they had done anything before. Uh, Winter Soldier, I don't believe they have. I still knew them from Community. I actually had watched a bunch of their episodes in Community and recognized the names. This was a name that I did not recognize. And the stories by Eric Pearson, who had done Thor Ragnarok, Godzilla vs. Kong, Black Widow. So he's been a featured screenwriter. I don't know if he was the main writer for those. Obviously produced by Kevin Feige. Came out June 29th for the world. July 9th, more specifically, for the United States. And let's just get into this film because there's a few things I find particularly really interesting about this film in its release strategy. Obviously, it kind of notoriously does not get a huge theater release. It has the Disney Plus access or whatever it was called, which ended up having Scarlett Johansson sue Disney, which became this whole ordeal. It ends up grossing a little under $400 million block blockbuster-wise, which... This is the interesting question, and this is where it's so hard to figure out stuff like that. What is a good box office right now in post-COVID world? I don't know, so $400 million doesn't seem actually that crazy low. I've heard of, I think Shang-Chi is right at above. I want to say it's a little under $500 million, $450-ish, and Eternals is, I think, around $350 right now. Of the last I remember seeing. So that's the question. Like, where is an actual good box office these days after pre co after COVID? So I don't know if this was a flop or disappointment, but it certainly was not hitting the billion marks that pre-COVID movies were hitting pretty commonly for the MCU. Again, not an indictment on the film, just another interesting note in an otherwise pretty complicated saga with box offices and is this the death of theaters after COVID? I don't know. It's questions I'm just not qualified to answer. But 
Besides that, besides the interesting way to release this film, it's also a weird time to release this film because for everyone who's seen Avengers Endgame, it's very clear Scarlett Johansson's character, Natasha Romanoff, dies in that movie very clearly. And then we have this film, which was originally supposed to be released a year after Avengers Endgame, which predates the events of Infinity War and Endgame and puts it right after the events of Civil War when Black Widow's on the run. And my thought is, why not just, why did you wait so long to release this film? Like, a lot of the emotional stakes of this film are just lost because we know what ends up happening to Natasha Romanoff. And, I don't know, doesn't that payoff of her basically sacrificing mean a lot more and is a lot more hurtful to, I guess, Yelena, uh, Florence Pugh's character, after you've had this film arc? So why do it after? Why do we have it after? I just don't understand why we got this so late in the MCU when it's like, this should have been happened before her death, I think. I think that's my biggest critique of this film, is it just comes too late, and ultimately it doesn't have the stakes because of the lateness in part of which this franchise comes in. It's like, it we're going. It feels like we're going backwards, which is something I don't think the MCU does often. But this one really feels like they took a step backwards, and focused on something that didn't need to be focused on, at least at this time. It, like I said, uh, had you released it, or had it had you made it a little bit more connected with Florence Pugh's character, ex- besides that last second post credit scene, which shows Elena at. Uh, Natasha's grave and Val from Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming in to basically it seems like recruit and obviously I know she's on Hawkeye I have not watched Hawkeye yet so I don't know exactly what her role on it is I don't know had you maybe had that part of the movie is the most connective tissue in this universe and take it out of this this movie is completely I think undervalues what the movie what the universe should be which is again kind of moving forward even films like captain marvel uh which again is another film that comes out right after infinity war but takes us back to the 90s with her character her character does a great job of explaining the captain marvel slash nick fury relationship which is then why nick fury would end up calling on her at the end they set that up with infinity war to be like Who is Captain Marvel and what does she bring to the table? This film, it's not that. It's the complete, excuse me, opposite of that. It's, we don't have any knowledge of Yelena until we see this film. We don't have any knowledge of the Red Guardian, any of those characters until after it. So it's like that emotional payoff that should have happened earlier does not happen. And it just, I don't know, it weighs it down. And also, I think the thing that also weighs that emotional payoff is that this film's just not particularly really good or at least my opinion I did not find myself enjoying most of this film I thought it was pretty slow I thought it was pretty bland I thought the action was kind of redundant I've seen it in multiple types of superhero and spy films before I thought this film is horribly miscast now I like Florence Pugh as the character of Yelena. I think she's a really talented actress, so she's not the ones I have complaints on as much. The, although I do think that the accent needs a little bit of tweaking, I think they're going to have to end up doing something a little bit similar to uh, Elizabeth Olsen in... Uh, oh my gosh, sorry. Of Avengers Age of Ultron to where then you see her in Civil War and Infinity War where the accent's kind of just missing. I think that needs to end up being what they do with this character because the accent just sounds a little bit too over the top to really be justified in this universe. But again, she's a good actress and she pulls off the emotional scenes with Scarlett Johansson very well. They have a very natural on-screen chemistry, so I do like them in this film together and they are the most interesting dynamic. The characters that do not get as treated as well or that of Red Guardian, where I do think David Harper is just completely miscast. He is doing the most stereotypic Russian impression I've ever heard that is almost straight up just downright offensive. I don't know any other way to describe it. It's so poorly, I think, just sounding, and it just 
it looks weird and he's kind of just he gets the the whole joke is he's this big fat lumbering guy and it's just like i don't know i just, it didn't work for me at all one they overuse the fat jokes two like i said this accent is so over the top ridiculous it's just like one either make it subtle or two just get somebody with an accent that you needed either if it's russian ukrainian whatever that accent's supposed to be that eastern european get something that just fits that a little bit better than whatever the heck this accent was like i said it just purely did not work for me in the slightest uh i also think the character of taskmaster is just handled extremely terribly in this film probably one of the least interesting villains in the mcu just and that's a pretty big compliment because there are some pretty boring characters in the mcu that are villains looking at you thor the dark world and uh the first guardians films and uh oh my gosh what's i don't even remember his character jude law's character in captain marvel those are some pretty mundane villains but i guess the problem is i have a bit more of a connection to taskmaster uh, playing the spider-man ps4 game and just kind of knowing his stuff uh beforehand that i wanted him to be better than what he is in this film uh sorry what she is in this film uh there isn't any real substance or weight with her we don't really get to see the cool fighting styles it's just it's a very quick sequence with taskmaster that happens at the end and then just kind of goes away and it's just handled so poorly. I just really thought this character could have been a really interesting introduction to the MCU and one that you could see fight more a bit grounded characters, whether it's obviously Spider-Man PS4 has them play that character. Sorry, my phone went off. Whether it's, uh, uh, what's it called? Sorry. Uh, Taskmaster played in PS4 or Spider-Man whether it's him going up maybe against a daredevil, even a Hawkeye in that show. And again, I think it could have been a very suitable villain role in Black Widow. It was just handled so poorly that it has no real weight to it. Uh, there are some positives I have with this film, which again, I, I am calling it a pretty mediocre letdown of a film. I think it goes on a little bit too long. Some of the cinematography and action sequences are just plain boring. I've seen them. They looked better in the Captain America films. They've they've done better action sequences with Black Widow in the other films. She's a much better action character in Captain America, the Winter Soldier, Civil War, and Infinity War. I can point to three specific scenes in each of those movies where I'm just like, she is doing so much better in those films. Whether it's the scene in Infinity War where she's going up against, uh, I'm blanking on the the lady's name who's one of Thanos's minions but it's her uh Okoye uh I believe Scarlet Witch is there as well when they're all fighting I think that's a better action sequence is the first uh ship the first scene in the ship in the carrier in uh Winter Soldier is a much better action scene that just shows off I guess her abilities and finally the scene in Civil War was another one that just straight up popped in my head was the, the one where she's going up against Clint in the airport battle. These are all scenes that are just handled much better. And there's not any action scenes in this movie that particularly stood out to me. Not to say that it's necessarily a bad action movie. It's just compared to what we've seen Black Widow do. You feel like in a fo film that is focused solely on her. She really gets a sign in, uh, in on the action. And in this film she just doesn't really get to. Uh... I did say there were some positives, and I do think one of the biggest one is the first like 15-20 minutes of this film are just excellent. I think the backstory of the Red Guardian, this family just having to kind of just break up and disappear, I think that adds a great emotional weight to the character of Natasha where we get to see her, uh, the demons that she faces in the relationship, why it becomes strained with Red Guardian, with the mother, with Yelena and uh, Scarlett Johansson's character. It all just works really well there and then it opens up with this amazing uh sequence involving uh who is it specifically why am i oh yeah it's a involving scarlett uh johansson as black widow going through and we see the training of her time in the uh, uh i'm blinking on the type of organization we are but we get to see her basically being the widow for uh, i believe it's the russians and 
it's a great, great sequence, just from bottom to top, just excellently executed. It's kind of one of those amazing just opening credits that just sets the pace and tone of the film perfectly. And that's what I was excited for. For this first 30 to 40 minutes of the film, I'm pretty on board and liking it. It's just where it ends up going. It doesn't have any real substance. The villains are lackluster, not just Taskmaster, but the one that basically employs Taskmaster, that is the one that is from uh, Romanoff's childhood. Is It's just, for lack of a better word, this film just feels generic. And that's kind of the hardest thing to say about the MCU, where even if... Uh, even with the bad films, I think they have a element of style and substance to this. This one lacks that at times. It doesn't fully lack it because there are... Scarlett Johansson is able to bring that character of Black Widow and make it a important, a good character. And this doesn't by any means ruin... Scarlett Johansson's legacy as Black Widow. I don't want to imply that at all. I don't think this is a bad film per se. I think it's a semi-mediocre one and just fine. That's kind of my definition of it. There are some good sequences. There is one particular car chase scene that happens in the first like beginning that kicks off the second act. Uh, there's this prison sequence where they're breaking out Red Guardian that's pretty good. There are sequences in there that I will revisit and rewatch, but besides that, I just don't have a particular reason to go back and watch this film. Now, I am pretty excited for Yelena to be in the MCU a little bit more in Black, sorry, in Hawkeye, see where that character goes and all that. So this film definitely has elements in it that work, and that's maybe even more than you could say about some other MCU films. Like I think Thor Dark, The Dark World, you're really struggling to find elements that work outside of Thor and Loki. This one has a little bit better of a character development and that. I just, it doesn't feel like the proper send off for Scarlett Johansson. And like I said, I think it would have only made Scarlett Johansson send off in Avengers Endgame better had this film come out about three years ago. Uh... Obviously, still needs a lot of work and fixing, in my opinion, but at least that emotional weight would have been slightly stronger in Avengers Endgame. But essentially, that's my review of Black Widow. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow for my review of The Eternals, which will be doing a spoiler review uh, from top to bottom, so be looking out for that. And then Friday, I'm going to have my Spider-Man No Way Home spoiler review, which I might I'm try thinking about when to drop it. I kind of want to drop it in the morning, but there is also logic to kind of hold off and wait a little bit to just make sure I'm not part of the crowd spoiling this movie. Just give make sure people have the option to see it first. So I might hold off on it and delay it till either Friday evening or Saturday morning, but we'll see. So anyway, thanks for listening. That is my review for the day. And if you like that, make sure to subscribe and leave a like and comment. So guys, thank you so much. Uh, check out Ben and Brand's See a Movie, where this week we are talking Die Hard and whether or not it's a Christmas movie. So take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.